Hi, this is Maya with Rico. This video is about lists and relativity. A list is a less formal way to generate a static group of records. So instead of making a field with choices that you tag, you can quickly and easily make a list. To make a list, find your subset of records. Here I've made a quick filter and you navigate to your mass action panel and select save as list. We find our pop-up menu and we either create a new list or we replace an existing list. Here are the choices for the available lists that we could replace. I'm going to make a new list. We'll hit save. Now there's a few ways to use our newly tagged list. So the first thing we could do is we can filter by our list using the lists field. There, we're back to our 230 subset. We can search using a condition lists. We navigate to find our list that we want to add and we add that to the conditions of our search. We can do the same thing within saved searches. We can make a condition for our saved search. Now finally, we can navigate to our lists tab. Depending on your permissions as a reviewer or case admin, you may or may not have access to this. If you need it, talk to your case admin about if it's right for your workflow. So we navigate to our lists tab if we have permission to do so. And here is the information about our lists. We have our name and notes that we saw before. We also have the associated object type. Most of the time we'll be using the document object. That refers to the documents tab where we made our list from. But it could be a different tab if you have a custom object that you need to make lists for. We also can track when the list was created and by whom. Now when we click into our list, we get some more administrative options if we have permission to do so. You can see there's the information that we saw in our previous pane. And here is another option which is really handy. We can create such search from list. When we click on that button, Relativity makes a new folder called list searches and gives us that search automatically. Here you can see the conditions of that search. It gives it the name by the name of your list, gives us the notes from the notes that we typed in to our list, and here's our list conditions. So we can update or change this search as needed. Now, this workflow is worth considering if you have a database with specific security permissions or a specific workflow for where you can save your searches, this might not be the best option to give your review team. Things to consider. So why would we use a list instead of just making fields and choices? Now, the first thing I think of is you don't have permission to make new fields and choices. But if you have permission to mass edit and make a list, this is the job for you. This is also, lists are great for discrete tasks in the database that are assigned to maybe just one person or aren't a part of your formal workflow. So you don't need your, um, you know, your responsiveness, first pass review workflow interrupted, your issues review, your deposition review workflow um, modified. It's not a big enough project to, to really formalize the review. It's just something quick and discreet that you need to manage and you can do it by yourself quickly and easily by making a list. As you probably already know, um, when you make a search, which, you know, the results are going to display whatever the current documents loaded to the database and current tagging and coding, um, that's going to be updated automatically every time you run that search. So if you need to identify a subset of records and 
only look at, for instance, documents that you haven't looked before if new documents were added to the database or there are new documents that are coded that you need to review, you can use a list workflow. You can see here we've got a saved search where we have all of the documents that meet the condition. File extension is like Excel from Susan Bailey's folder. Now, earlier today I went in and I reviewed a subset of these records and I don't want to look at those again. And new documents were loaded. So now we're going to look at just the documents from this subset that I haven't looked at yet. And here's the conditions for how to do that. You can see here, the same conditions from my original search, the Excel files from Susan Bailey's folder, and lists, not these conditions. So we're not looking at anything that falls into our Susan's Excel's reviewed panel. So you can see here where we had 50 some items. Now we're only looking at the 27 new items that I haven't reviewed yet. So along with that idea of looking at things that saved searches can't do for us themselves, um, including generating a set of more than one related items. So here's a use case scenario. I've found a set of four documents that I'm very interested in, but I want to expand my search. I want to see both the related thread group using email threading, and I want to see duplicates. But I can't make a saved search that will return both duplicates and thread group documents unless I tag them. So I'll go back to my saved searches. I've actually already set this one up. So what I did is I included thread groups in my search. Then I tagged everything with a list and I made a list search. Here's our conditions. Now, once we have our interesting docs, the four docs that we had before, plus the additional thread group, we can now pull in anything that's a duplicate and see the whole world of documents that we wanted to look at. Another thing that save searches don't do very well is track who made them and when they were last updated. Like I mentioned before, we can tag our subset with lists and we can refer to the lists tab. Even if you don't have access to this tab, this information is still being tracked. System created on and system created by. So if you had a list that you made and you needed to try and remember when you made it, or you were trying to find a list that you can't remember the name of, you can pop in here, figure out what date you did, and you can see when you created that list. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention about searches is that if you have a search that is very complicated and is taking a very long time to execute, for instance, if you're referencing other saved searches, which are also very complicated, make your life easier. Tag your other saved searches as lists and reference the lists because that will take much less time to execute than a bunch of nested searches with lots of complicated conditions. So that's the skinny on lists with some pro tips. You can use lists to do quick, discrete coding of document sets. Sampling, that's another example to mark when a, sam a sampling set has been reviewed and keep track of what you looked at for sampling. And some various scenarios when you can use lists and a lot of those work for fields as well. So if you tag documents, you can achieve much of the same thing with lists, but for these quick and easy tasks, lists are going to be your best friend. Thanks for joining me today. Happy reviewing.